So we're just going to have kind of a uh, highlight, not highlights of matches, but kind of record-breaking stuff, email highlights uh, at the very beginning of this because a lot of things falling and happening. So we'll just take a quick look at those after the introduction. And then we'll go from there, getting to the end of the season, uh, which we still have a little ways to go. Hey guys, RC here, back with episode 21 of our Youth Challenge. Play the kids. We are going up to the Vonorama National League next season after winning the National League South. We have also now broken the consecutive wins record, which is a National League South record with 13 wins in a row. We have also won 24 games in a row going back to November a uh, 24-game unbeaten run, which is a new National League South record as well. We are still on the verge of the clean sheet, which uh, Humphreys has equalized at 15, so that should fall between now and the end of the season, I would guess. And uh, we've broken the goal-scoring record. A lot of that will be covered in the uh, season recap, but just kind of wanted to hit some of the highlights in the emails. Don't forget, hit the like button, subscribe for daily football manager content. And I still have a lot of matches to play to get to the end of the season for the FA Trophy Final at Wembley. We've made our first signing for next season. It's 18-year-old midfielder Macaulay Ellis, who will join his end of contract. Uh, he is, as I said, 18 years old uh, from Wales. He's capped at the U19 level with the Welsh national team. And he can play the defensive mid, but more natural as a deep-lying playmaker, which we play in our 4-3-1-2 uh, that we currently play. And he could give us a second option, uh, either as a central mid or ball-winning midfielder, if we go back to the 4-2-4 with attacking wingers. Uh, not very pacey, but he is only 18. Uh, but natural fitness is good. Work rate determinations are high using the, the Sean theory of uh, 12 or better for determination at this level. So 15 should be good going up to the next level. Actual pretty good first touch marking for central midfield. That's actually really good. So and, and a brilliant passer of the ball. So even though he's not the paciest and he's only 5'3", I think he could be a really good playmaker for us in the uh, central mid. Uh, if we take a look at the deep line playmaker, uh, he actually has all the attributes and can do the job. So uh, we got him on a free and uh, he'll come in next season. All right, we have had our youth intake. So let's take a look at that. And again, it looks like a very, very good class. A lot of five stars and four stars in here. Uh, this guy looks to be the best of the bunch. John Perinello uh, is 16 years old and looks like he could probably step in at our starting right back. Uh, but yeah, 16 years old, and he could already be the starter for us from day one. That will be interesting. Uh, let's see, if we sort by ability, then we have Curtis Brunt, a number 10. Uh, he could, we could teach him central mid. He could be up top as a striker. Nah, not really. His finishing is horrible. Uh, he's going to need a little bit of work, but he's got some skill. And, you know, I'd like, I think maybe I'd like to try to get some good midfielders and go back to that 4 2 4. This technique, this tactic is working big time. I can't complain about it at all. Let's see. We'll just kind of run through these guys. So here's Jack Kendall Graham, 15 years old, central midfielder, 16 passing. Wow. And you know what? That could have, the guy that we just signed, that could make him obsolete. Somebody from internal. Gary McCarthy, uh, an, a left winger. And see, this would be a guy that would be, if we went back to that 4 2 4. Ruin Bacon. Well, you can't go wrong with Bacon, in my opinion. Left and right back, decent crosser. 
I think he could play either side. Needs to work on his pace, but everything else is there. Toby Peck is a central mid, attacking mid. Great first touch. Very good decision and determination. Uh, passing is decent. Marking, that's a typical attacking player. <laughs> Leaves a little to be de de uh, desired. But we've got a big, big crop of players that could come in this year and really beef up. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna sign. I would think the vast majority, probably the only ones that we won't sign, are gonna be Harrison. Now he's a keeper, so you know what we three star keeper. We could sign him just to have, and then another midfielder. We'll probably let him go. We'll see though. All right, well, let me get on with it. Uh, Williams also on the verge. He's two goals away from becoming the Vonorama South leading goal scorer. Dave Tarpey scored 44 goals back in 2016-17. So that was real life uh, before, you know, pre-FM21 and before we did our plus 30 and wherever we're at now. Because we're like 12 years into the save and... We did a plus 30, so we're about 42 years into the save now uh, from a time perspective. So Graham Williams on the verge of setting a new record there that's been around for a long time. Uh, Darren Johnson, I'm probably going to let him go. Uh, I've criticized his training. He's turned his nose up at me. And I think I have made the hard decision. I think I have made the hard decision to let Tim Cook go. 25 goals, 19 assists, but he's only two-star rated. His ability has really gone down. His form's been fine, but his ability has gone down. And I don't know if that's playing out of position, what have you, but he's also only two-star, and that's at his primary position. So I think it's time to let him go if we look at what the coaches say about him. Uh, he's a good player for most regional premier division sides. I think that's the level below us right now. So I think we're going to let him go. Also, a couple more matches. Uh, we beat H&W 1-0 and Concord 4-3, Graham Williams with a brace. John Rawlings, we've given him, we gave him a start. He had a first half brace as well. Well, we've had the youth intake. We've signed all the players. And Curtis Brunt, we looked at him. He became, on his debut this past match, the youngest ever Tiverton player at age 15 years, 347 days, breaking the mark held by John Bliss, who was one of the arrivals since we started the save. He was 16 years, 24 days. And that is a new club record. And the board... I asked for a coaching course. They refused it, and I they they were at least willing to hear me out, and I just said, hey, I think it'll be beneficial. And they went, you know, you're right. And they let me take the course. So uh, I just thought it prudent that we get a course in since we're going up. I need to become a better coach in the game uh, so we can keep pace with the guys, uh, you know, at the next level. We've had a, another win also. Uh, breaking the club record or the Vonorama record. The unbeaten run has continued as well. Uh, a 1-1 draw against Hendon. A 3-0 win over Sutton. Graham Williams with another hat, tr uh, another brace. Robin Mudge got the goal in a 1-0 game against Weldstone. Only nine shots to six. Not a lot happening there. And let's go ahead and take a peek. I'm going to sort by age. Uh, so we've only had one of the youth kit players. Uh, John Perinello, actually, he made his debut as well. Uh, so he's in at that right back. Uh, he made one start. So he's off to a good career. And Curtis Brunt, of course, played great, a seven rating, uh, whereas Perinello only had a 6.1. So he's got a little ways to go, even though he's, it says he's better. Uh, Brunt had to play because we had to send uh, Jose Luis, Luis, Luis Nuevo back on vacation. This time we did it for two weeks. That way he's rested and back for the FA Cup final, uh, FA Trophy final. So there's our youth intake. You can see what they look like all the way from the top down to, I don't know, up in this range here. 
Steve Fletcher was last year for sure. So some of these 16-year-old guys are this year and some were last year. Not sure which, but anyway, you can figure it out. If you go back and look, you know how to do that. Uh, and so we are playing a pretty rotated squad. But uh, hey, we're just plugging away. So we'll be back uh, again. Any Anything that happens that's of interest, that I think is of interest, I want to show you, we will do that. And then we still have our match for this episode. All right, we're coming up to the match today. We are playing Maidstone in the FA Trophy Final. A lot of black and gold in those logos. Uh, <laughs> so we are playing in our first FA Trophy Final in the club's 152-year history. This will be the best finish they've ever had, of course. And Maidstone United, only their second trophy final in their 73-year history. Uh, so that's good for them, I suppose. I hope we can come out on top. Let's go back and just kind of revisit this season just a little bit. August was the start of the season. We lost our second match against Boreham Wood. Look at the run there, all the way down to November 1st against Barnett. And then uh, <laughs> just the, the um, unimaginable run there. Uh, another loss against Tranmere in, that, in the FA Cup which was uh, disheartening after we played them to a draw in the uh, first in the initial playthrough. We got through the FA Trophy against Barnett in a replay. That was a tough run because we had two replays. Uh, fifth round, we had a quarterfinal replay. We blew through Boreham Wood in the semifinals, both legs. And now we come into just a one-off for the final. I always found that odd that they do two legs and then go back into a winner-take-all. Kind of interesting. So I just blew morale. That's not good. I hate those team meeting talks, man. They're just, they're just not good. <laughs> not good at all. I'm not even critiquing anybody anymore because these guys are gone. I'm just going to let them go. Let's jump in real quick and take a look at end-of-season stuff. And I know we're going to come back next episode with the end of you know with the season reviews but you know just kind of want to look at how the squad finished up so here's our goal scores graham williams reached 60 on the season off of a 42 xg 33 for mudge 26 for cook and combined they had 52 assists between the three up top attackers that's that's just one of those seasons you just go, wow, <laughs> wow. We had two more players with 10, Hemmings from the center back, Ireland from the left wing, Nuevo in the number 10, and they had another 30 assists between them. Eight goals for Tierney from center back. That's just astounding. Christian Simmons, of course, doesn't factor into that as he was out on, on loan. What a heck of a season. What a heck of a season. I do want to share something with you guys. So I, I went over to uh, SI to the forums. Let me pull that up. And so I had posted, you know, hey, I'm having issues with these contracts, which we've been talking about. And uh, so XAW Zaw, uh, he's a uh, moderator. Uh, so I appreciate him giving me some quick feedback. But he said, offer a contract that's... Uh, start date at end of season. Basically what that does is it makes them unpoachable until the start of the new contract. So let's say we do this in March, right now, you know, March, April. End of season is J June 30th. So they're, they'd be unpoachable till July 1st. And then at the start of the next season, you do that again. It's not a guarantee, but it does help out. Also, I've tried giving part-time, but I haven't had any luck. But he said, what you do is you switch to part-time, lock it, and then remove the appearance fee, but don't lock it, and then set the weekly rate wage rather high. Uh, they often increase things a bit, but they will accept it. And then, of course, I think if we go into the part-time contract, that gives a set duration. They can't leave on freeze during the life of that contract. And then, of course, I, I believe, and I may be wrong, but if once we become professional, which I hope happens in this offseason, uh, I hope that the board will do that, uh, then I think the full-time contracts 
will help out with that because then everybody converts to a full-time contract. So we'll give some of this a try as we move forward uh, in the save. But let's get to the match that we are here for today, a chance for silverware. All right, we're going to go with, this is our standard lineup. You guys know who it is. Nuevo's back from his vacation. He's in there. Everybody is at full fitness, so that is good, I think. Let me just double check. Yep, everybody's in there. Bissick's on the bench. He is uh, lacking some sharpness, but he's okay. Uh, Perinello's back from his injury. He's one of our youth players. Uh, he had two starts. He's got a long way to go. Uh, but uh, I think Izquierdo needs to worry about his spot. Uh, a lot of guys on yellow cards. I don't ever worry about that. Let's get to it, boys. Put in some goals and win some silverware for me today. That would be great. I don't think the players have ever reacted to me saying do it for the fans. And we'll actually take the walk out with the players. We're in Wembley. I don't know why they play this in Wembley because it never sells out. <laughs> But it is prestigious. Uh, is Cuierto. First highlight. Over the top. Mudge is on to it. And he tries to put it past the keeper, but it is saved and knocked wide. Murphy clears it out for Maiden's... Is it Maidenstone? Maidenhead? I don't remember. That team that we're playing. I think it's Maidenhead. Oh, it's over the top. Mudge is on to it. And he takes a touch, and it goes wide of the mark. I need Mudge to do better. Made stone, that's it. There you go, made stone. All right, let's encourage him. We've had three early shots. We've held them to two. This is going to be a foul just outside the box. Dangerous location for Walker. Oh, what a save. I thought he was down on the ground, and that was going over him into the net. He must have got a hand on it. While he was falling, worldy save. Headed out. All right, come on, boys. Let's encourage him again. Not a lot happening here. Another set piece. That one goes wide, and Humphreys just watches it. They've had a couple of set pieces. We've had five on target to their two. Pretty uneventful first half. Evenly matched. Let's, uh, I'm going to pump the fist. Let's do that. Everybody's composed, except for Ireland. He's aggressive. Okay. Interesting. Let's demand more. I'm going to keep an eye on my text. My wife uh, had to leave town, uh, family emergency. Her mom fell today and said she was able to get up, but she, her legs are not uh, supporting her. Oh, I thought we had the near post header. Oh, they could not get up there to make it work. There's the run in. Mudge puts it. Oh, no. He was not offsides. There's no way. Oh, come on. I don't think, I think Williams might have been offsides, but he didn't even factor. Oh, my goodness. John Bliss, let's bring on, let's drop uh, Nuevo back there. And let's bring Cookie on into the number 10. Williams is playing a 6-1 in the biggest match of his career. Come on, fellas. Demand more. Very evenly matched here. Oh, and they've got the highlight. Oh, uh, Williams walked away from it. Oh, that was horrible. It's over the top. Can Williams get there? Williams beats his man, and he's taken down in the box. A perfect sliding tackle, my ass. Oh, no, no, no. I thought he had drawn the penalty. Cook turns the wrong way. Harriver is over the top. What a save by Humphreys in stoppage time to keep us in this. Oh, my God. Oh, this is where we get FM'd right at the whistle. Headed out. Oh, what the hell happened there? 
Jesus. A brutal play. Oh, little header back to Humphreys. He controls it. Oh, don't, don't play on the ball. <laughs> don't play on the ball. No, that's bad. That's bad. Oh, come on. 13 to 12, 7 to 4. Oh, we should have snagged a goal. We had a couple of good opportunities. You know what? I'm going to pull him off and bring Bissix on in the mid. I just can't, can't in good conscience. <laughs> I can't in good conscience pull him off. Uh, Taylor's tired, but he's not out of it yet. He's playing a 6'9. I should have, I, I almost benched Hughes. I almost took Hughes off the bench for an extra outfielder, but I didn't do it. Um, let's go point the finger. All right, that motivates him a little bit. Encourage him. Stoppage time. Oh, my God. Could you see if we go to penalties? Oh, that would just drive me up the wall. Looks like another foul outside the box. And Walker puts it home. All right, we're going to go attacking now. Oh, that is just brutal. That is not how you want to lose a trophy. All right. We're going to pull off Ireland. Maybe. I don't have anybody to go back there. Perinello can cross. He can play a wing back. You know what? He's a youngster. He's young. Let's put him on the right for Lee White. I'm going to move him to support. All right. No, not another one. Oh, these are brutal. And they're head on, too. These are the hardest ones to save. Knocked away by Humphreys. They make three substitutions here. They're going to get the corner. Hit it out. A header goes over. He was pretty much unmarked there. And there's halftime. All right. I believe we've made all of our subs. We have. Can I make another one? Do I want to make another one? Let's move Taylor over to the other side. Let's bring Izquierdo off for Hugel. All right. We were able to make one more. Oh, my God. Near post. The header goes over. All right, let's demand more. Demand more. Do we have any more to give? All right, come on. Knocked away by Perinello, the youngster, makes the play. Williams, does he have anybody that'll come help him? Squared over. It's Ireland. It's in. 11th of the season. Graham Williams with the assist. Oh, I don't know how he picked that pass out. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how he got that through the two defenders. He really got it through four defenders, but. Oh, just a beautiful ball and just a soft touch by Ireland. Puts it in. We're going to go back to, uh, well. We're going to go back to positive. That has worked for us all season long. Penalties. Oh, my God. Um, I, don't, I don't pick my penalty takers. I let the players take care of that. All right. Let's uh, assertively try to relax. Be decisive. There you go. Oh, my God. All right. Humphreys steps into the crease. Brown lines up. Oh, and he puts it in. Humphreys went the right way. And it's Bissix stepping up to take the first penalty for the side. And he slots it in right post, and we're equalized after one shot apiece. It's Walker, the one that had the set-piece goal that sent us down. And it's saved. What a save by Humphreys. Oh, now if only he could have saved that one in the game. It's Tierney. Tierney, the center back. Oh, he puts it in. All in control there. Two to one. Advantage. 
We've got the advantage, now we just have to keep it. If Humphreys can make another save, he goes the wrong way. They've equalized, we've got one shot in hand, and here comes our superstar, Williams. Oh, and his is saved. What are the odds that a 60-goal scorer has his penalty saved, and we've lost the advantage? Oh, my God. Humphreys goes the wrong way again, giving Maidstone three goals to two in penalties. It's Mudge. Oh, he went soft. He tried to dink it in, and McKendry saves that one, so our strike force strikes out. Oh, that is horrible. We have got to get a save here. If they score, they win. And it's Ayadel. Humphreys into the goal. Oh, man. It's saved. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I tell you what, that's what's so great about this. You can't write this stuff. Who is stepping up? It's Ireland making the slow walk. I'm sitting over there having a heart attack on the sideline telling him to hurry. Go, go. <laughs> he takes the run up. Oh, he puts it in very calm, and we're equal at three after the first round. Now, I don't know if this goes to sudden death. Oh, that's another one of those Humphrey specials. How did he not save it? I think it is sudden death the way this is doing. Humphreys should have put that one. It's cookie. Both of our strikers to this point have missed their penalty. It's cookie. The third of the trio. Oh, he puts it in. Thank God. Oh, Reese on the seventh round. Humphreys actually holds on to that one, and we have a chance to win it. And it's going to be the youngster, the 16-year-old right back, Perinello. Remember, we've got him playing right wing in the midfield. Playing out of position. Only in his third match of the season, a chance to win the trophy. No, he rolled that one right to him. If that would have been a 7-10 split in bowling, it would have went right between them. Oh, no. Oh, McDade puts it right on the post. Humphreys can't get there. It's Hugel, one of our fullbacks. I hate penalties. <laughs> I just hate them. Hate them. And it went right to him, and that's it. We've lost in the finals in Wembley. Oh, that is heartbreaking. But we made it to the finals. That's got to be a success. We won the league going away. That has to be the most important thing this year, getting that promotion. Oh, I hate you guys. I hate made I hate Maidstone for winning. I hate penalties. I hate our players for missing. How does Williams miss that penalty? Oh, and we had a chance to win it. No, no, no. I'm not watching I'm not watching that e either. Hands in pockets. We'll go with that. Oh. I would have, if that would have been real, though, I would have laid into some serious ass with how the hell do you miss a penalty? How do three of you miss a penalty? That was heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Williams, Mudge, Perinello, and Hugel just did not look like they belonged there. But Williams and Mudge, you'd figure we'd get at least one of those two, right? We get 43000 for making the final. We pay out $3,700 for the, to the club, to the players. My assistant coach is in, in agony. How do 93 goals go missing in the most important penalty shootout in club history? Oh, that is brutal. Brutal. Uh, it's going to take me a minute to get over that, but uh, we have uh, reached the end of this episode and this season. Next episode will be the season review. 
We'll also jump into transfers for next season where we are going up. Oh, by the way, just final numbers. And Maidstone will be playing Boromwood in the final uh, out of the playoffs to go up. But we won by 38 points going away. That's, that is a huge accomplishment. 120 points plus 89 on the goal differential. Williams, the leading scorer. Uh, Williams, the leader in average rating. Cook and Mudge finished second and third in assist. Williams with 15 player of the match and Hemmings with 14 yellow cards. You go. Uh, shutouts. 19 shutouts for Yeovil. Wow. And where did they finish? Fourth? Okay. Uh, by the way, how many, uh, how many shutouts did Humphreys end up with? 19 on the season. I think that's 15 competitive. So I don't know if he set that record or not. Uh, but I'm sure Williams got the uh, goal record with 48. Wasn't it 40, 44 or 40? I think it was 44, maybe 46. So I think he broke the record. What a season for him. Only 21 years old. And uh, yeah, so let me get into the off season. We'll see you guys next episode. Hit that like button. Subscribe for daily football manager content. Let me know what you think about this season in the comments below. Have a good one. Bye.